sex bomb, sex bomb, come and get it on. I love me some Tom Jones and Moosty. God, what a day, what a dollar, what a what a dance. I love D words. Welcome to another exciting episode of the Neville Goddard Podcast. My name is Mr. 2020, and today we're going to explore the world of Tom Jones. Sex bomb, sex bomb, come and get it on. I want you to skip the words. I want you to find the feeling. So I bet you didn't know one of the things. We're, by the way, we're going to cover some really cool shit today in a sideways fashion. I love sideways podcasts because I can directly approach a subject and your head gets it. Your head goes, all right, all right. And then it has more questions. That's just the way we are as human beings. On the other hand, I like the dance. Dance is non-linear. Dance happens on a dance floor. See, a race has a start and a finish line. Not a fan of the start and finish line. I'm a massive fan of the dance floor. Where does the dance begin? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You give life to the dance. Your dance gives life to the music. So, did you know... I love studying mindsets. I love studying how people actually think and diving deep. Did you know most people seem to retire? Not because they're tired of the job, but because they're tired of the commute. They're tired of getting ready for work. They don't mind the work. But most people retire because they they don't like the commute anymore. They don't like sitting in traffic. I That's why I retired from working. I'm not a fan of doing anything called work. Work is a four-letter word. Work defined is doing anything for dollars. The worst kind of work is trading time for dollars. If you want to turn a hobby into something that you hate, do it for money. If you want to turn a hobby into something that's profitable and fun, do it while making great money. Build systems so that you can have fun and have fun with it. I love coaching. I love teaching. I love talking to people. I love exploring the dance that we are. I am absolutely horrible at small talk. I love, I love conversation that dances. And so the question shows up about just doing it, just diving in. And I got to say that the cool thing is in my life, I've been through a number of incarnations of me. Uh, there's the law enforcement incarnation, prison guard, prison guard, uh, police officer, that kind of thing. There was the sales version of me that, yeah, you know, I had to deal with. Uh, well, I, I, I did portrait photography, telephone sales, mostly for charity and AT and T. Then there was working in the old folks' home that taught me how to be young again. That there's there are different incarnations of me, but they all come down to one thing: my passion for the dance. My passion for the discovery and exploration of who we are and how this works. I, I suspect that all of us have something lovely to give to people. And when you can find ways to <clears throat> let that love, that light of you shine. By the way, here's your imaginal act. Imagine going to bed accomplished and satisfied. Having let your light shine to the best of your capability that day. Go to bed feeling accomplished and satisfied. Just, just find those feelings and add in a sprinkle of anticipation. That's one of my favorite spices. If you add in a sprinkle of anticipation, you'll get why, like Tom Jones sings about sex bomb, sex bomb, come and get it on. You know, the guy's just having a lot of fun. He brings all kinds of flirting and anticipation into the moment. And I just love stuff like that. But meanwhile, so if you can go to bed feeling accomplished and satisfied, notice if, if you make that about like what you did in the world or what you've experienced in you. Hopefully it's a dance between both. I'm a massive fan of worldly success. And spiritual exploration walking hand in hand. That's called a dance to me. 
If you just try to do one, it's a race. It's a race to being enlightened. It's a race to being financially successful. <laughs> Not a fan of races. I notice long distance runners tend to produce a lot of cortisol. At least that's what the scientists tell me. I'm not a fan of a lot of cortisol. Cortisol is like salt. You just need a little tiny bit. I'm a massive fan of spices. Those happy chemicals that we explore in Triple D and elsewhere. But I also appear to digress, so let's keep going. So most people retire because they get tired of the commute. They get tired of having to get ready for it. God, I used to work afternoon shifts. I hated afternoon shifts, but it's because it's like my whole morning was spent with a deadline. Having to get dressed for something later, having to drive someplace to do something. I loved the something. I loved being one of the guys that introduced smart cards to the U.S. economy. I loved being one of the... I loved when I was a cop. But, you know, the whole drive to work kind of thing, or the drive between departments. I worked for three departments part-time. God darn it, that was rough. <laughs> you get to discover how to let more dance in. You get to discover how to keep more dread out. A good DJ leads. A good fa a DJ loves the crowd. I know a guy who was pretty good. My first job, besides being a martial arts instructor, I was an 18-year-old black belt. Got certified in what's called Act 235 in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, which means I could carry a nightstick and a gun. And uh, I became a bouncer in a nightclub. There was always two of us on duty. It was a pretty rough place. It was called the Tropics. And we had a great DJ. His name was Hank. And Hank knew how to play the crowd. He had his favorite bits of music, but he knew how to play the crowd. He knew how to work them into something delightful that I call a dance. And I didn't realize it at the time, but I was only 18 years old. All right, I was working in a bar before I could drink in a bar. Imagine that. But I was 18 years old working in a bar, being the bouncer, very capable, learning how to dance because I grew up pretty serious. I grew up pretty structured and I got to discover how to dance. Now here's the thing, ready? You, sh you don't get to define the dance, you get to discover it. And your head loves to define things, especially before they happen. The spirit of you, the real you, the spark behind the eyes, loves discovery. People light up when they make discoveries. I'll ask the question, why do you do what you do? And I love when the honest answer shows up. And the honest answer always invites us to dance. Unless it's all about work. If it's about work, there's the, the dance dies. Why do you do what you do? For money. Not fun. Why do you do what you do? For the dance. And the money follows. One more. So my one buddy talks about the king of garbage. And he says, I bet the king of garbage isn't thrilled about garbage, but he's thrilled about those golf string jets that he has. I get it. Because there's something more to it than just do what you love and the money will follow. There's something about imagining up a day, letting your day determine what and where you'll trade. We were talking about my schedule yesterday. And my schedule pretty much goes from like 5 in the morning to like 10 in the morning. From 5 to 10 in the morning, that's when I do work, quote unquote. And it ain't work. It's posting and playing on Facebook, sending out the bulk emails, you know, writing the individual emails, checking in with my groups, talking, flirting with my people. From 5 to 10, I dance. And it's not a continuous 5 to 10 either. I mean, I drink coffee, talk with Victoria, go play a little ball with Bruce, come out to the hot tub, dance doing a podcast. The big thing for me, gang, is dance. How can you bring it on, bring it on? <laughs> come on, bring on some dance. When's the last time you danced? When's the last time you danced where you normally don't dance? Oh, I just love that. To our friends that stopped by yesterday, that was lovely. Thank you guys. We loved having you over. Let's do it again. And for those who haven't stopped by yet, you know, 
Your awareness of being is God. Consciousness is the only reality. Stop and be still. Let the dance of you emerge. My name is Mr. 2020. I hope you enjoyed listening today. If you got gold, I'm going to toss a couple goodies at you, a couple ideas. One is pearlpowerpack.com. Pearlpowerpack.com, we did three live group calls. Those are just good fun. We explored the Pearl of Great Price. I'd love to say I didn't know we could explore it for three group calls. The thing I love about the group call recordings is this. It's it's live dance. <laughs> Pearlpowerpack.com. You can get three for the price of one today at Pearlpowerpack.com. And for other goodies, if you just want to check us out, dive deeper, NevilleGoddardStore.com. Talk about good fun, good fun. <laughs> All kind of goodies there. Have a great day. See ya. Welcome back, welcome back, welcome, welcome back to another exciting episode of the Neville Goddard Podcast. My name is Mr. 2020. Today we're going to have a lot of fun with Tom Jones manifesting and uh, the lack of hesitation. God, I didn't mention the procrastination pack in the uh, actual recording, but I'm going to mention that too. Two things that go hand in hand here. Number one, the pearl of great price. Noticing if there's any area or aspect in your life where you haven't bought it. And two, the procrastination pack. God, there's just something marvelous about never feeling like you have to wait. And never feeling like you have to commute. Did you know most people... Well, you'll hear me talk about commuting in the podcast. We'll just wait for then. Have a lovely day. My name is Mr. 2020. This is so much fun. See ya.